One of the uh, my favorite moments in Prince Caspian is where um, is where they find the treasure chamber in Care Paravel, and uh, and Peter finds his sword Rindon and holds it up. I love that illustration too. Going through my old clay things kind of feels like um, like when the Pevensies find their old treasure chamber in Care Paravel. figured today uh, we'd start with something fairly basic that I think anybody could like do and then just do different levels of detail as you are inclined and uh, feel able to. We're gonna try forging some swords. And now I'm pretty happy with the um, the shade of gray that I've collected here. Um, now one of the uh, sort of tricks I figured out for making swords, for making a sword a little bit stronger, was um, using a toothpick at the center of uh, the sword itself. So I don't want a sword that's the entire length of this toothpick, although you can definitely do that if you so wish. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna break maybe about two thirds off of it. So that's how long of a sword I feel like having. So then I'll take some of this clay and just uh, stick the toothpick into it and start surrounding that over. Leave some of the end there so I can add a hilt later. I'm going to take off some of the excess clay and start flattening and narrowing it a bit. I also use to use toothpicks um, in all of my sculpting just to shape things where um, where my fingers don't can't fit or can't do as much detail as I'd like. Um, so I'll use a toothpick and kind of roll it around like a rolling pin to uh, sort of flatten the edges because I would like my sword to be a little bit sharp. I mean, it was never going to cut anything, but. The idea is that it should look like it could. Often I would do a thinner blade. Maybe I will. I'm going to trim off. I'm just going to slice that off with the toothpick. <laughs> I'm not doing this very efficiently. I could have, if I decided this before, it would have taken less time. Sometimes the trouble in sculpting is that while you're trying to hold one part to brace it so that you can do... Uh, change the pieces around in another part you end up kind of like squishing it with your fingers but like you can eventually if you're patient get what you want that's not a bad sword I'm fairly easily content <laughs> okay then I might try with uh, my toothpick just kind of draw uh, do an indent like you sometimes see in the center of the sword then I gotta pick a color for the hilt Find some clay. Oh, I'll just use this one. This is a nice kind of, tends to be, I think it has been in the past, my sort of go-to for a sword hilt to have something yellowish or golden. Um, so this happens to be here. I'm going to try that. Sort of a brownish gold. Uh, these are two that I did before, years ago. Happened to have found in my plasticine drawer. Uh, where I did, um, this one's kind of a tree ish pattern where I kind of have it broken off into the like branches just because I happen to like that look at the time and this one similar in some ways for this I'll do something fairly classic I'll do that I don't know my sword terminology enough to say what the name of it is mm, actually I kind of want a bigger one of those kind of stab through with the toothpick that we left jutting out, but leave room for so I can stick a the handle part. And add some more clay on here to 
even it out. I'm gonna work on this part here. Yeah. I don't know exactly what to say very much about how I do these parts. I just uh, kind of rolling pin it wherever where I want it to go and then eventually you just kind of if you spend time with clay you get used to how it moves. I like as opposed to drawing that working with clay is very very fluid, <laughs> very changeable. <laughs> no matter what you do in one part you can like uh, you don't have to erase anything you just kinda redirect I guess. <laughs> I'm kinda like evening out, erasing some lines. Back in the day I made huge armories of all kinds of plasticine weapons that my people would wield. But there, anyway, that is a fairly basic sword and there's like lots of different variations you could play around with. Next, Peter took down his gift, the shield with the great red lion on it and the royal sword. He blew and wrapped them on the floor to get off the dust. He fitted the shield on his arm and slung the sword by his side. He was afraid at first that it might be rusty and stick to the sheath, but it was not so. With one swift motion, he drew it and held it up, shining in the torchlight. It is my sword, Rindin, he said. With it, I killed the wolf. There was a new tone in his voice, and the others all felt that he was really Peter, the High King, again. Huh. So, I figured um, that I would have a go at making Rindon today. Um, and also, I am eating some of the uh, roasted nuts, honey roasted nuts, um, which are, you can find the recipe for in a, uh, a recent Badger's Burrow. Um, mm, it's pretty good. So, I went ahead and made the blade, since it's essentially the same as... Uh, for I was working on the blade for the other sword, this sword. I'm making this one a bit larger just so I can do a little more detail. Hmm. Yeah. I think I will go with the uh, the movie version. It's a pretty good version. I don't always like to go with the movie version of things, but I do I do like the what they did with this. Let's see, we're gonna need a red for the red part of the hilt. And Yeah, it's pretty narrow. What do I want to mix that with? Maybe some of this. This is kind of a reddish brown I happen to have on hand. Because it is more of a, a little bit more of that type of a red. And actually, this is a bit of a richer red. I'll add some of that in. And probably some black to darken it. We'll see how it goes. I like mixing colors. So that's, that's a pretty good red, I think, for what I'm going for. And I already happen to have a gold here that I'm, I'm pretty happy with for using that for the gold. So then we actually want to use some of the same gray because the crossbar part of the hilt actually looks, I use most of this anyway, it's also a steel. Kind of a bit where it comes down this way. Comes on the other side. Yeah. I was just watching the uh, part of the episode of Prop Culture on... Um, Disney Plus, where they go back and look at the props from uh, this movie, from the Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe film, and uh, yeah, I haven't watched all of it yet, but it looks pretty fun. So now the 
handle part is quite thin. But, and then we've got a little golden band around the base of it. Band of gold. So I'm just going to roll out a string of clay. Put it there. Line it around. And then, where did my toothpick go? There we go. And then just, uh, yeah, prop that in place and uh, slice off the extra. And there's another band of gold. Band of gold! Further up it. Doesn't quite meet, but I can make it meet. I'm not gonna take the time to, uh, to try and get very small and do the writing on the blade, but I'm going to have a go at making this lion head. Let's see. Should be about that size. Part should be the face. This part should be the face. I think it's looking like that. Hmm. So we'll try and make a Clear enough line of what is the face and where the mane begins. I'm so gonna get this smushed once I get it done. <laughs> what? Oh, it's coming undone from the house again. You stay on there. I guess I kind of want to get the mouth. Sort of do it. Uh, the clay is getting warm, so it's getting pretty soft. Rindon. I'm fairly happy with that. Not too bad. Not too shabby. It is my sword, Rindon. With it, I killed the wolf. <laughs> Some other important swords in the story include um, Caspian's sword that he wears on on one side while he has Queen Susan's horn on the other as he rides out to seek adventure. And, uh, and then the dwarfish sword that he then uh, replaces um, his own sword with because he finds uh, the dwarf made uh, sword from like forged um, underground and in hiding is, uh, is so much better than his own sword that it makes his own um, seem as clumsy as a stick, as feeble as a something. Maybe I'll try and find the quote. <laughs> the workmanship of the arms was far finer than any Caspian had ever seen, and he gladly accepted the dwarf-made sword instead of his own, which looked in comparison as feeble as a toy and as clumsy as a stick. And then Reepicheep and his rapier, of course. And then Rindon comes in, of course, again at the end. There's even some swords on the cover. What I love best about Prince Caspian is the sense of renewal, the sense of joy and wonder returning, and uh, and the wildness and the mirth and uh, revival of, of things. 